So this is another video in my series where I break down real world use cases of AI for businesses for you. And in this instance, we're going to utilize AI to create and reply to uh, RFP or request for proposal. And then in this instance, we're going to largely use a tool called Llama Parse. Uh, and then Llama Parse is a free tool. It's MIT licensed. Um, and then it's put out by a company called Llama Index. They put out a lot of their um, really big all around rag tuning and everything regarding rag tuning. <laughs> so for this model, we're going to utilize a lot of their tools. That they have built out. There's multiple different ways to do this. I'm not being promoted uh, in any way by Llama Index by any of these people. It's just a tool that I'm utilizing to showcase in this particular instance and uh, how all of this works. And then so very specifically, uh, we have a notebook here uh, and then we're just going to utilize uh, mostly the notebook. Um, and then so uh, we have our proposal or our RFP. Um, and then so in this instance, we're going to assume that you are Microsoft and you're responding to the Jedi Cloud RFP put out by the federal government. The government is using the submitted responses to decide the best vendor for their needs. So. The very first thing that we need to do before we do anything, before we touch anything, we need to plan out what our orchestration looks like. And then so this very first step, this illustration is the most important step that you can take within this, right? You need to understand when you're building out a uh, agent framework, a multi-agent framework, a <laughs> anything regarding a AI workflow, you want to build and plan all of it out in advance because really all you're doing is you're taking an agent or an LLM model and you're building a bunch of code and a bunch of actions around it and a bunch of sequences around it, right? An operator. And then these operators have um, orders of operation, et cetera. And then so really all you're doing is you're just building out a big order of operations problem. <laughs> and then some of it is going to be code. Some of it's going to be handled by the LLM model. And you're determining that as you build out, right? So you need to understand what the structure is and how it's all going to do. So once you have it all planned out and, you, and all mapped out, okay, so we understand our flow. Our flow is straightforward. Uh, in this instance, we're going to take an, a, a, a request for RFP. We're going to give information around that R request for RFP. We're going to parse that information. We're going to feed it to the model. The model's going to take in that information and it's going to generate our RFP response. And then so in this instance, we download our template and then we and so we uh, we have our Jedi RFP template. And then again, we want to give the model context around this template as well. So uh, we're giving it a lot of context around how the Microsoft platform works, as well as a digital defense report. Uh, so it can have the context around uh, what we're going to want to build out. Mm -hmm. And then so uh, that's kind of the context that we give it here. And then so we give it and we upload these context documents. And then so the big thing to know and then why I'm utilizing Llama Parser in this instance is, is that so rag tuning is very straightforward, right? You're just, you're taking your data and whatever that data source is, and then you need to vectorize it and you need to create a vector store that the model can access and then utilize that vector store in order to create and craft its, and its responses. That's all we're doing. So we have our data. We're uploading, creating our data sets. In this instance, we have our uh, main document that we want to write tune on and then our supporting documents. Then we upload these to create our vector store. And then the rest of this code is just parsing out. Right? So it has to parse these different documents, their PDFs, slide decks, uh, text documents, et cetera. Okay. And then so we need to, uh, and that's where this tool that we're using it comes in, Llama Parser, because it does all of that. And then so, we just run their simple libraries, their Llama parse libraries, boom, parses it all out. And then the next thing that it does is it generates uh, responses for each mod, uh, each file. And then in this instance, we're utilizing GPT-40 mini. Um, so it'll cost you 75 cents per million tokens uh, to generate your summary, summaries. So probably about 75 cents uh, to, in this, to run this particular example. And it's going to generate uh, one to two line summaries of each of the files in order to um, give the models more context. And that, that summary is what we're going to actually feed into the vector store. So once we have our summaries, we build our indexes, creating our vector store off of that. Um, and then uh, we just... Uh, 
in this instance, this is utilizing Chroma. Uh, you, there's different ways that you can utilize the vector store, same as with Llama Parser. So whatever you want to utilize in that instance. And then so once you have your vector store set up, you have your documents set up in the vector store, you need a way to retrieve from the vector store. So you create a function to do that. So all of this is, again, combining functions, right? And then this is taking concepts that we would typically think of as one concept and breaking them down into individual concepts. So this concept of uh, taking a document and uh, using it as our like a uh, ground source truth, it requires multiple steps. It requires parsing, parsing the document one way, uploading it into a vector store, creating the vector store, and then a way to retrieve from the vector store. So we build out all of our individual workflows and then we combine them, right? So we have to combine and make them all work together. And then with that, that introduces more individual issues that can pop up. So you need to make sure that your workflow is right, right? And then so we have all of this, we have a bunch of prompts in here, a bunch of like uh, all of the engineering required to fit all of this together, right? Which gets complex. So this is gonna be actually your most complex cell here because this is where you're doing like all of the work, all of the engineering, making all of these puzzle pieces actually fit together. And it's easy to just talk about that they'll fit together <laughs> and you actually dive into them. And then there's a million issues. Right? And then these are a million issues, your code. This block usually starts out, like when you're doing something like this, you start off with a block like this. And you're like, okay, this can be easy. And then your block ends up like this, right? All of this, because this is just, oh, another issue, oh, another issue, another issue, another issue. And then so you're just creating function after function after function. So you define that. Cool. And then uh, you run your workflow. Uh, and then so in this instance, that's literally just, again, uh, parsing the document and then trying to generate what our RFP response will be. And you see, if I was to actually run this in real time, it would take about 20 minutes to run, which is why I'm not running this in real time, but you can see that it, this has been run, right? And then so when it has been run, we can see it generates in its um, a chain of thought reasoning, right? So it's it's um, all chain of, it's chain of thoughting all of this, every single step of the way, asking itself questions, parsing the document, okay, what's in this document? How do I answer this? How do I respond to this? What is this question, et cetera. And then so it's just going through prompting itself, building out its response and then you can see this is its whole response right uh, and then we get at the end our big response and then this is a big huge rfp um and then here we go <laughs> this is our our end result right um and then so it's really this straightforward so when it comes to building out agentic frameworks um these are the types of things that i see a lot of businesses tackling as far as individual problems more and more. And then the thing is, is that these are generally individualized problems for your individual um, use case and your individual business, right? Again, when we're talking about this big cell and engineering out all of this out, all of this complexity is um, uh, your systems, your processes, your stack. <laughs> and all of that depends on um, what your what all of that looks like for you, right? All of the, everything else surrounding this is very minimal. And then it all comes down to this, which is why you can't create like the one size fits all solution around these things, yeah. because this is the majority of the work. Even if you build out all of this, and even if you build out a template for this, it doesn't do anything for your specific organization when it comes down to these things, right? And that's the big thing that a lot of people still miss with AI. They want this like a one size fits all, uh, easy type of solution. And that's just not what AI is, but it will solve these challenges for you very easily. Once you have this set up, let's say that this is your RFP process is you do 10 of them a week. Now, all of a sudden it takes you five minutes to do 10 of them. And then uh, that's it, right? And then so that's the beauty of this. Once you have it set up and you go through the logic and you set it up for yourself. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.